In case you somehow managed to miss it, there has been some stellar science happening this week. Up top! No one? Uh, no one? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, welcome back to The Stemulus. I'm Steph Evs, and here's what happened this week in STEM. Scientists announced last Monday that they had seen a pair of neutron stars collide from 130 million light years away. This is the first time scientists have been able to see both light and gravitational waves coming from the same event, and they are stoked about it. For those of you unfamiliar with neutron stars, they're the collapsed cores of large dead stars. Despite being the dead bodies of these larger stars, they're actually incredibly small, usually only having a radius on the order of tens of kilometers. Since they are so small, they're also incredibly dense. To put their density into perspective, our sun has a mean radius of around 696,000 kilometers. A neutron star that has a radius on the order of around 10 kilometers can have a mass around two times that of our sun. So you're packing a lot of mass into a very small area. So to summarize, neutron stars are super dense, super hot, very small objects that are spinning up to several hundred times per second. For this particular case, the stars had probably died in supernova explosions around 11 billion years ago and scientists believe that they had a mass of around 1.1 and 1.6 times that of our sun. These two stars colliding, which is known as a kilonova, is quite literally making waves in the astrophysics community. Gravitational waves to be exact. For those of you unfamiliar with gravitational waves, you can check out my video here that talks about the first gravitational wave detection by the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, better known as LIGO and a lot easier to say. But if you want a quick refresher, gravitational waves are energy carrying waves in a gravitational field that are created when something big happens in the universe, like big bang big or two black holes colliding. While these may sound like things that would be pretty easy to detect, it's actually super difficult. Einstein originally predicted the existence of these waves in 1916, and almost 100 years later, LIGO detected its first set of them, leading them to win the 2017 Nobel Prize in Physics earlier this month. This event, dubbed GW170817 for the date it was discovered, was only the fifth time that gravitational waves had been detected. It took place in the southern sky in the constellation of Hydra, which as I said earlier, is about 130 million light years away. And on August 17th, it tripped sensors at LIGO's two detectors in Louisiana and Washington State for about 100 seconds, which is significantly longer than the very quick detection scientists normally see with merging black holes. LIGO wasn't the only place to see this event. In Italy, the Virgo gravitational wave detector picked up the signal, and two seconds after LIGO saw the event, NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope caught a glimpse of a burst of gamma rays coming from the same location. With all of these observations, scientists around the globe got into gear and began working together to pinpoint the location in the sky that the event came from, and then determine what it was and what they could learn from it. This global effort allowed a team at Las Campanas Observatory in Chile to use the SWOPE telescope to observe a bright blue light source coming from the event 11 hours after the initial detection, marking the first time a neutron star merger had ever been observed. It was further confirmed by the Gemini South Telescope in Chile about an hour later when the team observed the same source in infrared light. As scientists all over the world watched the neutron star merger, they also got confirmation of another long-held theory. They were able to conclude that the merger created a massive cloud of golden platinum mixed with radioactive waste that eventually grew to the size of our solar system. Scientists have long believed that kilonovas were a source of many of the heavier elements in the universe, such as gold or silver or platinum, and this event has provided them with the first ever proof of this phenomenon. They estimate that this event produced anywhere from 10 to 200 Earth masses of gold and 500 Earth masses of platinum. One of the coolest things about this entire event has been to watch the scientific community come together. This was a huge effort. In fact, it's estimated that 70 astronomical telescopes participated in finding the collision, the published research has thousands of authors coming together on a single publication, and it is estimated that roughly 15% of the world's professional astronomers were involved with this discovery. That is incredible, and her ability to detect gravitational waves is reshaping the field of astrophysics in ways we could have only dreamed of. So that brings us to our question of the day. There are so many incredible aspects of this discovery, some of which I couldn't even fit into this video. So which is your favorite part? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you'd like to check out this story a little bit more in depth, I will include links to my sources down below along with links to all of my social media and my Patreon page. So please check that out in your free time. If you like this kind of STEM content and you want to see more like it, give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out any of the sciencey videos I'll be putting out in the future. 
As always, if you see any really cool STEM related news stories throughout the week, feel free to send them to me on Twitter at, at the stimulus using the hashtag twist them and they just might make it into a video. But with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay awesome, and I will see you next time.